Welcome to Worship Today. If you come every week, most weeks, some weeks, or you join us online, you are welcome. We are glad that we can all worship together in this place. Today is the AGM. Please join us after the service for a light lunch and the meeting afterwards. And uh, there's a lot of announcements, but I want to draw your attention to some of them. I want to thank our singers, our soloist Laura Lee Friesen, and our scripture reader Lee Carlson. Also during the week, remember in your prayers, Margaret Ray Daly's family, she passed away on February 12th, Paul and Bonnie Cadu and their family in the passing of Claire Cadu, a mother and a mother-in-law. Um, we're happy to see Joan Stevenson here with us today. She is recuperating at home and Jody Kerr is still in the Deer Lodge, hopefully to get out in the next few weeks. We also recognize Margaret Ray who's here today and remember her and her family in prayer in the passing of a husband, a father, a grandfather. Now there's some other announcements such as the Outreach Speaker Series is back. Now believe it or not, next week is March 3rd. That is when it's happening and you will want to come at 9 o'clock. It's from 9 to 10 a.m. in the lounge with a longtime member of St. Andrews, Kathy Knowles. Kathy will share her wonderful story from a modest beginning of, sh of sharing a book with six children, teaching them to read, and now under a tree to a network of nine libraries receiving 350,000 visits a year. Come and hear about this story of faith and a story of living in action. So come and be a part of that. Also, March 17th is Pie Day. Now, it's a day when we actually eat pie, but the pie has more meaning than just eating the pie. It is public, explicit, and intentional. It's part of the affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. So come and be a part of that service. We will have a guest speaker, um, and we will also be celebrating in the basement with pie afterwards. So if you can bake a homemade pie, please sign up at the back of the church. I'm sure there's many other announcements. Please read them in the bulletin. Read them on the e-blast. Let us join together in acknowledging the territory, the land on which we worship. Let us read it together. This land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Inuit, and Dakota peoples in the heart of the Métis Nation. We worship Creator on this land and acknowledge with respect the thousands of years of ceremony, faithfulness, and relationship that are etched in footprints and fire on the soil and rock that surrounds us. Now our invitation to worship, I wasn't gonna do left and right because I personally get very confused with that, my right, your left, and then we're all confused. So you, this side is number one. So in the invitation to worship, you read number one. So grab your bulletin and follow along. Number two, and the choir is number three. So one, two, and three. So let's join together in our invitation to worship. Come. Come, come as you are, to this sacred place, to our time together, as we weave our prayers, songs, and stories into worship. So pull up a chair, roll on in, gather all the parts of yourself, and bring them to the altar. Be here, be present, be open, just be a child of God, a blessing, a seeker, a disciple growing in grace. Come, let us worship God. Let us worship our God in singing Voices United, number 288, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
In the lighting of the Christ candle, our response is Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let us say that together. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In times of struggle, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In times of wonder, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In times of anxious anticipation, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. In this time and place, here and now, in all the days of our lives, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. As we continue our journey toward the cross, let the light of the Christ candle remind us of who we are and whose we are, struggling, wondering, anxiously anticipating people of the way. Let us pray. Ancient of days, bring our future hope into our world. Bring your love into our lives. Open our hearts and minds to your message that we may respond with hope and trust with our ancestors of old, may we walk in the lineage of faithful discipleship. I would ask the children to come forward at this time and have our special children's time. I'm going to have a stand because I have a magic trick. Now, I have a deck of cards. I've never used this deck before. I should have left the plastic on, but I didn't. But see, there's all the different numbers. They're not all the same, see? All right, so I'm going to shuffle the deck of cards. Now, who thinks I can do this trick? Whoops. <laughs> it's not looking hopeful. <laughs> Who thinks I can do this trick? I know none of you want to say you think I can't, but we're going to try. All right, I'm shuffling the deck. Whoops. All right. Now, <laughs> and not well, I must say. All right. Now, I want you to pick a card, Micah. Pull the deck apart. Pick a card. Show everyone else, and I'm not looking. Okay? Show the other kids. Okay? Does everyone see the card? Don't tell me. Okay, put it back in the deck. All right. Now, I have my magical wand, abracadabra. Now, I'm going to shuffle these. Now, do you think I'm going to come up with the cards you had? <laughs> you are probably right. <laughs> All right. Now, I want you to pick the card off the top. Tell me, is it your card? It <laughs> oh, it's a blank card. <laughs> This is going oh so well. Try again. <laughs> was that your card? No. It's the 10. What was your card? The Joker. Now, I am not a magician. I cannot do a trick if my life depended. I can't shuffle a deck, so how can I do a trick? Anyway, the point is that sometimes we expect God to be like the magical wand. When things aren't going very good, or we're sick or something sad happens, we think that God is going to take a magical wand and make everything disappear. But it doesn't happen. God is with us when we journey through those tough times. But God doesn't take it away any more than I can take away a card and find it in the deck in a magical trick. So let's pray and thank God for the gifts that God gives us and especially being with us in those times when times are tough. Maybe we're sick, maybe someone we know is sick, a pet has died, or something happens in our lives that is sad. God is with us. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are with us, that you are not a magical wand that takes things away, but that you journey with us just as we journey together during Lent. Amen. Now, before you go, we have stones, rocks that you painted last week. If you can find your rock last week, do you remember what your symbol was? The story is the story we're reading today about denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following Jesus. And all of you who created a stone, you can take your stone and put it on the table. We're creating a, a, a wreath all around the table. Oh, you weren't here last week. Oh, well, take someone else's stone and you can put it on for me. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. And this week, you're, did you do that one too? No? 
This week, you're going to do more stones, and we're going to create, like we did at Advent, a wreath all around the table. So thank you for painting the beautiful rocks, and be sure to come up after church and see them. And we'll see you after Sunday school. I'll practice my magic. <laughs> Please join us in singing Voices United number 121, Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery. This week we're doing verse 1, 2, and 3, plus a special verse. Um, you can see on the second page when you get it open, there's a, a few verses that say other verses to use during Lent. We're going to use one of those. We're going to use the one for the second Sunday of Lent because this is the second Sunday of Lent. So we're going to do verse one, two, and three, and the second Sunday verse that starts in our call to be a blessing as our fourth verse. Let us pray together the prayer of confession printed in our bulletin. Faithful one, we want to believe. Help our unbelief. We desire to follow faithfully. Forgive our hesitancy. Hold us by the hand. Guide us with your love. And cover us with mercy and grace. Help us answer your call. Trust your promises and walk in your ways all the days of our lives. Amen. Christ's righteousness has become our righteousness. God's merciful love is enough to save us all. All is forgiven. All is restored. God's beloveds are made righteous in Christ's grace.
Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 to 7, and then 15 and 16. Abram becomes Abraham, and Sarai becomes Sarah. Their names are changed. In their old age, they become parents. Both are blessed by God and promised to be the father and mother of all nations to come. What faith it must have taken for the elderly Abram and Sarai to become parents of a single child and to announce that change of their names. Faith is like this. It enables us to function as if the not yet were now in the full assurance that it will soon be. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Obey me and always do what is right. I will make you my covenant and give you many descendants. Abram bowed down with his face touching the ground, and God said, I will make this covenant with you. I promise that you will be the ancestor of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, because I am making you the ancestor of many nations. I will give you many descendants, and some of them will be kings. You will have so many descendants that they will become nations. I will keep my promise to you and to your descendants in future generations as an everlasting covenant. I will be your God and the God of your descendants. God said to Abraham, you must no longer call your wife Sarai. From now on, her name is Sarah, and I will bless her and I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she will become the mother of nations and there will be kings amongst her descendants. Abraham bowed down with his face touching the ground and he began to laugh what he thought. Can a man have a child when he is 100 years old? Can Sarah have a child at 90? He asked God, why not let Ishmael be my heir? Our gospel this morning is Mark 8. Chapter Mark 8, uh, verses 31 to 38. The cross is central to understanding Jesus and discipleship. It is fitting that the first reference to the cross in the book of Mark is the prediction of the cross and cross-bearing. As people of faith, we are called to deny ourselves, which simply means following a higher standard than the world does and doing what is right even if it means denying ourselves some of the pleasures of this life. It means putting God first in our lives. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise again to life. He made this very clear to them. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Jesus turned around, looked at his disciples, and rebuked Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. Your thoughts don't come from God, but from man. Then Jesus called to the crowd and his disciples to come to him. If anyone wants to come with me, he told them, he must forget self, carry his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Does a person gain anything if he wins the whole world but loses his life? Of course not. There is nothing he can give to regain his life. If a person is ashamed of me and of my teaching in this godless and wicked day, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes to the glory of his Father and the holy angels. This is the word of God.
God, we ask that you would be with us as we hear your words. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to listen, and hands and feet to do the work that you've called us to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The cross is not to be loved. The cross is not to be loved. That is what a theologian, and I'll try to get his pronunciation, his pronunciation right, Uden Moltmann says, the cross is not to be romanticized. It is not to be sanitized. It's not a piece of jewelry to wear around your neck. It's not something to hang on the wall. It is the means by which humans inflicted pain and suffering on Jesus, the Son of God. Harsh words, harsh theology reflects on the scripture reading for today. And if we think about it, all you have to do is pick up the newspaper or look on the news and you see all sorts of examples of how humans inflict pain and suffering on others. Often I hear people say it's such a sad world that we live in. This scripture reading says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And what on earth does that mean for us today? They seem like old words and not really for a generation today. Now, Albert Schweitzer is another theologian who was a brilliant man who could have had a position in any seminary, any school, theological school in the U.S., in the world, actually. He chose to go to Africa, and it was... In those days, they were called missionaries, and to be a missionary. In a remote place where he wasn't known, he gave up his prestigious job that he could have had. He gave up all the things of this world to do that because he believed it was the call of God in his life. Now, what about us? You know, we think about denying yourself, carrying your cross, and following Jesus. Seems really out of date for us, similar to paying it forward, but it's calling us to let go. And Lent is about a time of se a season of the church year where we are called to let go. Called to let go of some of our time, of our money, of our talents. Perhaps in this day and age, how we can deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus is by saying yes when we're asked to fulfill a position in the church. Obviously, someone sees the gifts and skills in you. Perhaps it's to make space for someone who is here, who wants to do something, but perhaps they want to do it just a little bit differently than we normally do it, and it's worked for hundreds of years, although we haven't been around hundreds of years. It feels like it sometimes. We, we've done it this way all the time. And it works, probably does. However, maybe it's making space, letting go and letting someone else have an opportunity to do something differently, to make space. It's wonderful that children come up and they're able to talk and have that special time together. It's letting go of, of perhaps some things that are important to us. Denying ourselves doesn't mean you become a doormat and everybody walks all over you. It doesn't mean you, you have no self-esteem and poor me and woe is me. No. It simply means letting go. Lent is a season, as I said, of letting go, of being, of taking the opportunity to fulfill some of the ministry things that need to happen in the church. Perhaps it's being on an on a interest group, our committee, council. And then when you're there, your work is not done. You just don't come to a meeting, and then it's finished. Council members, we are called to be models for our people sitting in the pews. We are called to be present at the events of the church. We are called to be the spiritual leaders of this place. Don't leave it all up to the minister. There's not enough hours in the day for the minister to do all that needs to be done. It's all of us. We say that if you look at the bulletin, it says we're all ministers. 
But do we really believe that? We certainly don't often act like that because oftentimes it's very difficult to fulfill the needs of our faith community. And some will say, well, you know, I've done my time. I've done, my, done it, done it all before. The work God calls us to needs to be done. Someone needs to do it. And I know that God calls us all. Deny yourself. Follow Jesus. Take up your cross. It's not just coming to church on Sunday morning. That does not make us good disciples. We need to live that out in the community, out in our world, in our families, in the way we live and act and be in the world. The cross is the story of our journey in Lent. At the end, we come to the cross, and then we come to the Easter story. But it is a time when we take time to think about our spiritual life, to take time to think about what nurtures our spirit, what can we do to help that to grow. Sunday morning is a start. Sunday morning is not all there is. <clears throat> it is part of it. It'd be a short sermon if I lose my voice. Sunday morning is part of what we're called to. Jesus calls us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. That's what discipleship's about. That's why we're here every Sunday. Find ways that you can answer that call. Jesus invites us to do that. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Who will answer that call? It's interesting how the spirit often leads because as I was preparing the this, this service, I realized this hymn, Take Up Your Cross, was perfect. That was chosen before I chose um, where I was going with my sermon. So the spirit does truly move. So let us join together and sing prayerfully the words of Voices United 561, Take Up Your Cross.
Let us pray. Creator God, we praise you for the beauty of creation, for the warmer days, the sunshine that warms the earth. Creation will soon, in the next few months, show signs of spring, and for that we are thankful. We pray for creation, that we will be attentive to her needs and not just our own. Teach us what it means to be responsible for your creation, the creatures, and be open to you, our creator. Help us to be supportive of one another, of others who come into this place of worship. Let us find room for all. Teach us to be inclusive, caring of one another, even when we have different opinions. We pray for a couple that I married yesterday, Amanda Nose and Marcy Somers. Be with them as they start this new chapter in their lives. Help us to be grateful people, grateful for the people who work so hard to make this place a place of worship, who work endlessly Sunday after Sunday with little or no praise. Help us to learn to criticize little and have hearts full of gratitude. Help us to find ways to express that in words, deeds, and thoughts. Be with those who are grieving the loss of one they love. We remember Paul and Bonnie Cadu in the loss of a mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, and friend. We remember Margaret Ray Daly's family in their loss of a mother. We remember Margaret Ray and her family in the loss of a husband, a father, a grandfather, a friend, a colleague. We remember those in hospitals and institutions. We pray for Jody Kerr, who is in Deer Lodge, recuperating from a fall and a respiratory virus. We thank you that Joan Stevenson is with us today, and she too is recuperating at home. We remember others who remain unnamed but are in our thoughts and prayers. We take a moment and remember those we know and want to remember in our prayers. Let us take a moment of silence to do that. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer, Voices United, number 916, printed in your bulletin, a paraphrase. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, Spare us from the grip of all that is evil. Free us, for you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Our discipleship involves giving of the gifts that God has given to us and the resources, giving of our time and talent and our money. Give by par, e-transfer, leave it at the back of the church or drop it off sometime during the week. Let us be people who give generously to the work of our church.
as we prepare for the AGM, I will say grace so that when you go downstairs, you may begin to eat your lunch. Let us pray. We thank you, God. Today is the day we have our annual general meeting. Be with all who have worked so hard to prepare the food and make space for us downstairs. Be with us in our meeting. Give us hearts to discern your work and your word. In Jesus' name, we ask the blessing on the food and those who prepared it and all who will eat it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are created for love redeemed by love, and inhabited by love. Go now in the power of that love and draw others to that same love. Mm -hmm.